Welcome to Kevin Makes Cool Things. I'm Kevin, and this is my Rakasa's Fang Dagger from the solo leveling manhwa. This is the first installment in a challenge I'm doing to make every dagger from the solo leveling manhwa. Previously, I used exclusively OpenSCAD, which I love, but wasn't a great choice for making items like this. Over the last several weeks, I've been transitioning to Blender, which has made a lot of things possible. I set this challenge for myself both because I love solo leveling and because I needed a way to push myself and improve my skills. This dagger is Rakasa's Fang, or Kasaka's Fang depending on the spelling. It's the dagger that Jinwu receives after beating the giant snake at the end of the subway dungeon. It's the first dagger we see him using, not counting the crappy one he talks about in a flashback, so it's the first one I'm making as part of this challenge. I started with two reference images. One showed the blade clearly, and the other showed the handle. I combined these images in GIMP and traced over the result, creating a blueprint I could work off of. Next came Blender. At this point, I had watched a series of introductory videos, watched a couple of prop modeling tutorials on YouTube, and attempted to make the Horn of the Goblin General from Overlord. I was still pretty clueless, and it's going to show in the next few minutes. My first attempts at the blade were pretty bad. I'm not sure how, but the mesh got really messed up. The inside was on the outside, the edges were connected to the wrong points, and the blender modifiers didn't even know how to make sense of it. I ended up starting over a few different times, which was fine because that's how I learned best. Eventually, I created a plane that worked, although it was far from perfect. I extruded this plane by one millimeter and then extruded it again and adjusted that second extrusion to create the angled edge of the blade. This meant that after I mirrored this piece, the blade would have a 2mm flat edge, which was much easier to print and finish than a sharp edge. To create the angled edge, I just took the points from the second extrusion, switched the model so it was transparent, and lined them up with the inner lines of my blueprint. I used a subdivision surface modifier to round everything and then I set the key edges of the blade to have a crease of 1, so they wouldn't be rounded. This worked really well. The detailing on this was tricky and poorly defined. I made the decision that this spine was actually a set of scales, this was actually some bony plates which had fused together, and this was a single large bony scale of sorts. The scales climbing up the blade were largely improvised by me, they were poorly defined, but I think these look good and fit with the design, so I'm happy with them. The boning along the back is a sphere that I extended and diced up with a bunch of split cuts. I just put a cut at the beginning and end of each of these plates. Then I put another cut in the center and scale it down to around 0.8. Afterwards, I would crease the edges, and with the subdivision surface modifier smoothing everything, it does look like bits of bone fusing together. I did the same for these spines sticking out of the back. The bony scale on the hilt is my least favorite part of the design. There were a few seemingly conflicting details shown in the manhwa which I couldn't really capture. After more than a dozen attempts, I decided to go with this pretty boring scale with no detailing. I figured that there's a lot I like going on in this model, so it's better to have this part be a little dull and let the pieces I really love catch your attention. I exported the model and repaired it in Repetier Host. Then I imported the repaired model back into Blender. I placed a bunch of cubes and used a Boolean intersect modifier to show only the places where the cubes overlapped with the model. This nicely split up the model for printing. I used a Boolean difference to cut in a few cylindrical holes so that I could put a bit of nail in between these pieces to help align them and strengthen the joints. Unfortunately, I had to split this piece up again to get it to print properly, but it turned out alright. For finishing this print, I did it a little differently than I have most of my past projects. I talk about the reasons for this change a little more in my Horn of the Goblin general video, so I recommend you check that out. I attached this together with some bits of nail and two-part epoxy. I used a Dremel tool for most of the rough sanding. Using a sanding bit and a grinding wheel saved me hours of work especially doing the detailing on the bone pieces. Afterwards, I applied some wood filler and sanded it off by hand. I primed this with some spray-on sandable primer. Once the primer was on, I noticed some rough areas which I missed, 
so I went back to apply some more wood filler and do some additional sanding. I relied heavily on these small Dremel bits for cleaning up the details, especially for these scales on the blade. I also used some small files, but they couldn't clear things out as nicely as the Dremel tool. I put on another layer of primer, and then moved on to airbrushing everything. I had hoped to paint everything with an airbrush, and just use bits of painter's tape to mask off different sections. I had terrible issues with paint bleeding under the tape, so that wasn't going to happen. I looked online, and apparently there's better types of tape I can buy for this, which I might do for a future project, but for now I needed to find a different approach. I decided to paint on the black by hand, which probably would have happened anyways to get the detailing within these scales. The goldish color from the bone pieces was an absolute nightmare. It comes off with the slightest touch, and I managed to get it on every part of the dagger and pretty much everything else I own. My phone case didn't look great beforehand, but a bunch of yellow fingerprints aren't doing it any favors. This caused me a bunch of trouble with the other colors. It got into the white sections, meaning I had to touch them up later with a brush. It also liquefied when I was painting on the black, so I had to do several coats to cover this. The paint looks pretty good, all things considered, but it did fall short of my aspirations. Next was applying a clear spray-on matte coat. This is where I got really lucky. I was racing to finish this, and I got sloppy. I sprayed on the first coat without figuring out how to let this dry, so I ended up haphazardly taping the handle and suspending this midair. As I was walking away, I was thinking that this is probably going to end badly, but I did it anyways. Ten minutes later, I came back to do the second coat and discovered this had fallen. The pommel had broken off, but I honestly deserved much worse. I had just experienced this with my Horn of the Goblin General project, and I should have known better. What's really embarrassing is I immediately made this mistake again, and put on a clear coat without figuring out a new spot for this. I ended up sticking it in a box with my airbrush paint, which worked surprisingly well. My biggest takeaway is not to rush. I got sloppy, and it would have served me right if this had shattered. Before reattaching the pommel, I wrapped most of the handle in this cheap nylon rat tail cord I got off Amazon. I used super glue to attach this, and because I didn't want it getting messed up, I went really slowly and used about three dots of glue per rotation. The handle looks pretty good, although I didn't do a perfect job. I'm really glad I painted it black before wrapping this so that my mistakes aren't as obvious. I used two part epoxy to reattach the pommel. To make up for my earlier carelessness, I even cut up an Amazon box to securely hold this while it was drying. Lastly, I wrapped the last half inch of the handle. I'd held off on this because I wanted to see how it would look with the pommel. Overall, I think this was great. It's the best model I've ever made, and the finishing process was really good. I'm still learning, which should be evident by this video, but I've definitely improved compared to the Baruka's Dagger project I did last year. If you enjoyed this video, then I hope you'll give it a like so YouTube recommends this to more people. If you want to support the channel and see more of my projects, I hope you'll subscribe. You can expect a lot more from this challenge in the coming months. I have the Night Killer Dagger partially painted, the remake of Baruka's Dagger is printed and waiting to be assembled, and I've got the half-finished model of the Demon King's Dagger open in Blender right now. I should be posting at least one per month, so stay tuned.